Welcome to Hobby Clubhouse with a review of the Bandai Limex model kit Tyrannosaurus, which isn't a Gundam or a robot, but rather the skeleton of a Tyrannosaurus. Along with this kit, there's also a Triceratops, but I only got this one because of course it had to be the T-Rex. And actually, the type of dinosaur probably isn't what's most interesting to modelers here, it's the material Limex that's used in this kit. Now, let me say up front that I'm not automatically on board with the marketing of Limex, but I am more curious as a modeler to try it out as a new material now that it's offered. The company that owns Limex has this embarrassing promotional video with a discount Morgan Freeman spending around 3 minutes on feel-good platitudes about how Limex can save the environment. In 2050, 40% of all the world's population is expected to face severe water shortage without telling us in more concrete terms exactly how. And this is the only video they have. There's no other video from them or anyone else about it, which is really suspect. But to take the word at face value, Limex is mainly made of limestone, which they say the advantage there is that we have more than enough of it to use, which I suppose is good. They say that it can be a substitute for both plastic and paper, and I don't know about the paper part. Paper production has its environmental costs, but it's really not even close to a serious threat, which is why I suspect there isn't really a call to reduce paper usage overall. The really odd thing is how there's just no commercial products for Limex of any kind on the market. There really isn't. No one has taken them up and made bowls or spoons and pallets out of this stuff. So technically, as far as I can see, these little dinosaur kits are the only actual commercial product that uses Limex in any way. Yeah, it kinda rains on a parade a little bit, right? They make it sound really special. And one more thing before we get started, Bandai themselves don't seem to care too much for that eco-friendly angle, and they made their own bullet points for why Limex is great for model kits. So first of all, they say the texture of it feels a bit like dry plaster. And second, it has a matte surface. And third, it's more weighty than traditional plastic, which I actually think are tangible benefits to model fans, at least instead of just feel-good ideas of saving the planet. And for some reason, these kits are actually P-Bandai products in Japan, and here in Hong Kong, they're just suddenly in stores as a regular retail product, and I don't know why. But at least that's what made this review possible. So let's get down to business. The Limex Tyrannosaurus was sent out from P-Bandai in October 2021, and the kit itself costs 1,540 yen, which is surprisingly very affordable. This is not the same kit as this one right here, the imaginary skeleton kit which costs over twice as much. I know it's very confusing, but the two products actually have nothing to do with one another besides being both dinosaurs. The box measures 30 by 19 by 45 centimeters, so it's like a really thin HG box. The short side of the box gets all this information and the photo from the front of the box, and the other side is exactly the same. The long side shows off the kit with studio shots and talks about how thorough their research was. And the other side is some plain text about what Limex is, and then it's all legal text. Inside the box, we get the Tyrannosaurus spread across this one big runner with that small breakaway section that I snapped off by mistake, but in the box it's supposed to come as one piece. The other runner is for the display base, which says Tyrannosaurus here, so it seems that they don't just reuse that same one for both kits, which is nice. One thing you'll immediately notice is that the runners have a lot of flash around them, you know, these little flat bits that grow out of where the two halves of the molds meet. This is a new model, so this suggests to me that the mixture of Limex and the polystyrene needed a lot more pressure in the injection molding process, which isn't too surprising when Limex here is actually a solid material. The runners label the material as PS, so that would mean it's only polystyrene, although on the box they clarify that it's actually supposed to have K underline as the main material, which is probably the Limex. This suggests to me that Bandai doesn't really plan to make this model in the long run with the same materials, and they're leaving room in the future in case they want to reuse the mold for just plain polystyrene to make a model kit. Not exactly a photo of confidence really, but if you're a collector, then you probably want to grab a pair of these kits during their short production run right now. The instructions is a single folded sheet with the runners list and the assembly instructions already on the front here. And then the other half are the rest of the instructions. The inner pages are far more interesting, with a ton of stuff on dinosaurs which you can probably spend quite a lot of time looking at and it really is quite informative. All the stuff about the Triceratops is here as well, so probably you get the same set of information on both kits. 
A bit over two hours later, we have the T-Rex put together, and the process is a bit tougher than you might imagine. The biggest problem is that the materials don't have even and smooth surfaces where they're cut. You can see that on the spots here where I cut off the gate to the display base, and they almost all have this really ugly pit that's dug into them. And this is me being as careful as I can be. It's quite annoying because I'm sure many people want to keep the bare material unpainted because of how unique it is, but you get pits like this all over the place. But as far as really bad news, you'll be happy to know that there really isn't a ton beyond that. The matte surface actually feels exactly like how it looks, and you can feel the very fine texture of the surface that isn't completely smooth as you pass your finger over it, and it really does bring to mind dry plaster, though it's not as coarse and unpleasant to touch. As for the matte surface itself, you can see here how the light hits it and there isn't a smooth bright sheen, so the very minute unevenness of the surface is directing the light in all different directions. And the kit is indeed heavier than if it were just polystyrene, though not by a whole lot. It's just about noticeable even if you weren't told about it, and even then I don't think it's a very meaningful difference, but at least Bandai wasn't lying about either of these points. And surprisingly, the mixed material isn't brittle even though it feels like it might be, and if you bend it, it's gonna curve rather than break immediately. Surprisingly as well, the surface is friendly to sanding and you can get a smooth surface that's no different from pure polystyrene. And not that it's gonna shock anyone, but regular plastic cement will work on this because polystyrene is part of the mixture, which will react to glue and it's gonna bond just fine. The bond is probably weaker to some degree, but I have no way to put that into a clear number to give you an idea of how much that is, but I can tell you that the bonded joint is strong enough and it's not something that's ever going to bother you. Again, not that it's going to shock anyone, but super glue works fine as well, so there's not much to report here. As for the T-Rex model itself, it can actually stand on its own even without the base, even though you have to angle it a little bit upwards like this, which isn't really how they're supposed to stand. It's not a very big model, with the entry grade RX-78 here being quite a bit taller. It's a convenient size and it's something you can easily have on display on a desk. But of course, the best way to show it off is to still have it attached to the base here, which has two slits cut out for the legs that slot in like this. This allows for a much more natural pose where the T-Rex's back is much closer to being parallel with the ground. You do need to use this custom base and the T-Rex doesn't have any holes for any other types of display stands. I'd say the base is nice, but if you really think about it, it is a little bit odd that it's white like this and it's textured the same as a skeleton. The color and mixture make sense on a T-Rex, but the illusion is hurt a little bit by the base, so you might want to paint it and add some shading or grass to it, or even just color it black to separate it from the T-Rex. Two joints on a T-Rex are a bit of a problem. One is at the base of the neck here because the top and the bottom of the neck vertebrate can't hold themselves together well enough to give us the grip that we need. The other is the base of the tail, which is really powerless to hold the weight of the tail and it just flops around like this. This part really hurts the kit quite a bit and a minor fix is to turn the ball joint a bit where at some angles it holds a little bit better but it's still not much. Both can be fixed with some glue, but out of the box both of them will be a bit inadequate on their own. The skull of the T-Rex looks really nice with the empty cavity inside all visible through the cage all around it that forms the top of the skull. There is a seam that runs along the top of the snout to the back right here, but Bandai has disguised its back part as where the plates of the skull meet, so you don't really think much of the seam even when you see it. The chest cavity and the pelvis are also wonderfully made, and it's very fun to look at this hollow structure from different angles to see how all the bones come together to form this enclosed space. The bottom of the ribs here are sculpted individually, as are the small spines on the tailbones, though towards the end there is a section that's fused together for a bit right here, which you can cut and separate yourself if you want. The upper ribs are a bit more abstracted and they're fused together like this to give the model a bit more strength. And the neck is fused together too because of limitations of molding. The joints themselves don't draw too much attention either, like the leg here where the round joint disguises itself into the shape of the bones. Probably the most visible joint is this one on the tail here where that circle shape really stands out a lot against the straighter shapes all around it. So all in all, the articulation doesn't come at too heavy of a price on the appearance, which is really good. As for that articulation, the head can be adjusted on its ball joint. The jaw opens up quite a lot. The base of the neck has a ball joint too, which we saw earlier already. 
The dinky T-Rex arms are on a single ball joint at the base. The legs meet the hip with the ball joint and it can be angled as you would expect. There is a swivel joint right next to it so the legs can kick sideways. The knees swing along a peg and it has quite a lot of travel from back to front. The ankle is also on a peg so there is also a lot of travel on this as well. The base of the tail has a ball joint that we've already seen. And then there is this peg here that helps us adjust the shape of the tail a little bit. In principle, the model has a very wide range of movement all around, and that's a nice thing to have, but mostly on paper than in practice. The first problem here is that joint again at the base of the neck, but this time it's the shape of the neck that's the problem, where it blocks it from turning side to side very much. Even when coupled with the head, it only manages a shallow turn like this, which really hurts the expressiveness when the T-Rex can't look at things. The second problem is even if the skeleton manages to hold itself up with just one leg on the base, there's not a lot of sensible poses you can do with all that articulation. There's certainly some potential here, but it is going to take a lot of creative thinking and maybe a lot of playing around to get you something interesting. Or else, you're likely just going to opt to leave it in the default stance, which really doesn't do much with all those joints really. I mean, I'm not complaining that it can move, and I love it this way, but it's just the truth that the articulation can't show itself off very much. With all that said, here's a Hobby Clubhouse 3 point verdict on the Bandai Limex model kit Tyrannosaurus. Number 1. Limex is interesting, but it's not very promising. If you're curious about Limex, then it's certainly very interesting to experience as a material through this model kit, and the price is low enough that this is a harmless purchase. The texture is nice to touch, and it obviously took some engineering to get the material to play nicely with the polystyrene, but for all the differences and the supposed benefits to the environment, there is just not a lot here that's compelling to modelers as a material, and there's no clear reason to have this over pure polystyrene. Heck, the properties that make this a viable model kit is all because of the polystyrene that's still here, so it's arguable if the Limex even means anything to us here. So I don't see much of a future in Limex reappearing in other kits beyond this one-time curiosity, maybe with the exception if the world just runs really low on oil for making plastic. And number 2, it's a fun desktop kit. New materials aside, the T-Rex is conveniently sized and you can easily put it on display on your desk, and it's sculpted well enough that it's not going to look like a toy. And when you're bored, you can pluck it off its base and play around with it because you know you're going to do that. It will fall apart on you from time to time when you handle it, but it's no problem if you glue the parts together, which I recommend. And the Limex is a nice conversation starter if anyone ever asks you about your desktop T-Rex decoration. And number 3, it has an ironic existence. I'm sure Bandai didn't mean for any of this, but the bleak future of Limex is incredibly ironic when the one retail product for it is to make dinosaur bones. Collectors will want to pick this kit up precisely because they know this kit won't be around for long, and there won't be any more new models after these two are in stores now, so one big allure of this kit is that you can buy this easily for now, but it's gonna go extinct before long, so you know, FOMO or YOLO or whatever. So that's a review of Bandai's Limex Tyrannosaurus, a very intriguing experiment with new materials on the surface which didn't quite bear fruit for us modelers in the end. Thank you so much for watching, come look us up on social media with updates on upcoming videos and sneak peeks at future projects, links are in the description below. Or hang out here some more with one of these other videos. But before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos from Hobby Clubhouse, and I'll see you next time.